We've undertaken the endeavor of building all human-made structures within the Minecraft Earth. We don't even know how many human structures are standing, but it's something like a house for every two people on average, which equates to four billion buildings. To illustrate the size of this number, a human being lives an average of 28,000 days. If you met a thousand people a day, which is impossible, good luck meeting a hundred people a day, you'd end up meeting 28 million people within your lifetime. That's 0.7 of four billion. That's how insane insane the number is. Which means that reinforcements in this case means nothing, right? No matter how many gamer bodies we throw at this insurmountable void, we'll never completely fill it with space. So we can't build the Earth in Minecraft. That's where it ends, right? There's a constant war in human conversation where ideas fight for their existence, for dominance. Ideas, challenges, very often seem impossible because we're collectively convinced from our social or cultural identity that it is impossible, and that very often all it takes is a unique and interrogation to devise a solution that had been missed all along. We placed the first brick, then we built a building in Seattle. We skipped 10 and went straight to 100 skyscrapers, then we built a thousand. I thought we would do 10,000 buildings in Seattle and hang up our hats on the idea of 100,000 being impossible. But through brawn, vigor, and determination, we couldn't even manage 10,000. The idea of just mind-numbingly charging forward against this goal is stupid. You have to think about it differently. This project is not a building challenge. It's a development challenge, a coding challenge, a puzzle where all the variables have to be considered. Because 4 billion sounds like a lot, but there's about 9 trillion grains of sand on your average beach, which means you're setting your blanket down on at least tens of millions of them. A number in and of itself isn't intimidating if the individual unit itself isn't a difficult or insurmountable consideration. Our individual units are houses, which take a long time to build. That's the problem. Not that there's 4 billion of them, but that it takes 10, 20, 30, 40 minutes, sometimes an hour to build just one house. But why are we taking that value for granted? What if we could change that runtime? A house is extremely complicated and it takes months or longer in real life for people to construct them. So matching that architecture in Minecraft and for it to take that much time, it makes sense. But I've been on the ground floor of this project building houses too. I've built thousands over the years, but my recent 1000 in the Build It 1 to 1 finale, where they were all in the same area, that experience really got me thinking the entire way. Almost 1200 hours spent mostly by myself, but some of it with other builders, and we discovered that the way to speed up this process was to mass produce building phases so that you can accelerate that phase by doing it all at once for however many city blocks you plan on doing. The entire time I was doing that, my experience personally was that every block placed, every line established, every roof pattern etched, all matched some sort of larger pattern that resembled a repeating quilt-like continuation. It was replicable as a complex pattern that drew itself out ultimately in a loop. A complex series of actions, but ultimately no matter how complicated the path of action was, it eventually repeated itself. And replicable patterns, ultimately, no matter how complex, can be algorithmized into being generated automatically. I'm here to tell you that an average of 95% of a total house's features when replicating them by building in Minecraft is ultimately just a series of yes-no decision inputs. This means that if we developed algorithms that were capable of pre-generating all of these different terraces, roof patterns, building colors, outlines, window designs, and building a building just came down to choosing the types and patterns. I personally believe that building a house in Minecraft could be reduced from the current 20 to 50 minutes to a single minute. The race to build the earth in Minecraft shouldn't be about the total. The real race is getting the house building time from its current slow manual incarnation with some world edit down to insanely low numbers. Ultimately, getting a house's total area, including backyard and street view features, accomplishable in an average of 60 seconds. The race to do this is a combination of automation and efficiency where, if the obstacles are successfully traversed, could get us closer and closer to that average time. First off, there's a building pre-generator in its infancy stages that developers at Build the Earth have already created. This generator has the possibility right now of generating many different building and roof types, but still doesn't apply to the vast majority of being able to accurately build any suburban structure on Earth to Minecraft. But this generator is the pre 
precursor of a system that's going to change everything. So the first thing you do when building a building in our project is you TPLL the corners of a building on Google Maps and teleport to each of those four points in game using a line command with world edit to make the outline. Slow as hell. We need an intermediary program that not only speeds that up, but every part of the process. A build the earth program that could essentially speed up every part of the process that is required to do and auto-generate every part of the process that can be synthesized after a list of yes or no prompts and color choices by you, the builder, could make this go insanely fast. Here's how this program works in my head. But first, something something YouTube analytics, something something complete. So if you could do that, that would be awesome. And don't forget to subscribe. So first, it acts as a map overlay for the real world. As you're looking at your house on Google Earth, you can very quickly just click the four points of the building, or more if it's more complicated, and in four seconds you've established your outline instead of taking one to five minutes building it with our current right click for coordinates, go to Minecraft, and then TPLL to the spot. You click the four corners really quick, and then the outline exists in the program. This program would act as an overlay to Google Maps, not just in the 2D sense but in 3D. Viewing your house on Google in 3D, you can then determine its height and the roof shape by clicking certain key points when in a certain mode. You click the bottom from the top and a 3D line allows the program to determine its height, which the program then inputs the house you're focusing on as a shell, meaning that the 3D house you're looking at your 3D Build the Earth overlay is also treating as the actual building in Minecraft. From there, you select what type of roof it is so the slant can be properly generated, color of walls and roof, and then you have your basic shape. From here, you can select the next tab, which is essentially the details phase. Here's where we have to start building manually, right? Wrong. In wall and roof detail, you will then be able to select the tab Windows and then you can rotate your object in Google Maps and just click on every window you see once, which will then coordinate points that the overlay determines where windows are to be placed on our house in Minecraft. You can do this for any roof feature as well, even though some of those shapes are more complicated. How? Well, there's a finite number of roof feature designs that architects use, and it's a smaller list than you think. We'll be able to account for and generate every single one of them, like we would for the windows or doors. You can then use similar processes to build Street View, outlining the placement of grass, dirt, flowers, trees, etc. You can select your mix of flowers to populate gardens, or you can manually place them. When you're done assimilating all details necessary from Google Earth, you can then switch to building mode to place blocks. Not actually in Minecraft, just in this overlay. Why? Because Minecraft is too slow to play Minecraft. Think about it. All this time we're flying from this one edge to place a flower, flying over to the other side, placing another, switching around in our inventory, and then placing another flower on the other side of the yard. When in reality, if we treated Minecraft terrain like a map game where our cursor can just omnipotently place any block or flower or anything in whatever space we want without having to fly to it, we would be eliminating so much wasted time from the sum total. Minecraft building mode in this program would allow you to rotate and edit your plot from a larger perspective, with your mouse instead of Steve flying around and placing all remaining extraneous details, allowing for levels of efficiency never previously realized. And once you're done, click generate and boom, everything you created in the overlay program appears in your Minecraft server. You can then add any extra touches you want in actual Minecraft, which isn't necessary. With practice and utilizing this tool to its fullest, most efficient potential, Building time can be reduced drastically. How drastically? Well, let's consider the full implications of this. If building time can be reduced to one minute per building, if you went all out in one day, you could finish 1,000 buildings. What took me over a year could be accomplished in a day. This is over 16 hours, granted, so you would have to go all out. But let's just pretend that building 16 hours a day is sustainable with this tool for a single builder over a larger span of time. 
10 days is 10,000 buildings, meaning 100 days is 100,000 buildings. A large portion of a year could grant you a sizable empire. If we follow the one building per two people rule, Rochester, New York has a population of 200,000, meaning you could assume they have 100,000 buildings, meaning a single builder could finish Rochester, New York in less than six months. For those of you keeping score, thousands of us have been at it for years, and we're not even close to finishing a single city yet. So how does that kind of speed stack up against 4 billion buildings? Hold on to your horses, this is where it gets exciting. 3 years is a little over 1,000 days, so if we want to finish the project in 1,000 days, we divide 4 billion by 1,000, which gets us 4 million. That means 4 million buildings have to be finished per day to get to 4 billion in 1,000 days. 4 million a day would require just 4,000 builders using this tool to get 1,000 buildings done each day. Now, we do not have 4,000 active builders, let alone one psycho enough to build for 16 hours a day for three years. So these are insanely optimistic and unrealistic expectations. But it's a theoretical to show you what's possible at that kind of speed. If we can develop a program that allows builders to finish one building per minute, we can get the project completion time down to what I originally right, told Mr. Beast. Yes. An estimated finishing date of a few decades, maybe even less. For all our trials, tribulations, considerations in making people's dream in Minecraft to become a reality, it always seemed like the idea of building the largest and greatest map to ever exist in Minecraft was beyond reach. That this entire time the idea of actually making something of an unfathomable size was just a dream because the goal was astronomical. But it isn't about building 4 billion buildings. That's not the goal. The goal is to get the house building from an average of 30 minutes to an average of one minute. That's all we have to do. This breakthrough is so ascertainable, we can almost feel the sort of potential in terms of map creation this would unlock for builders. The way we've been shackled for years, spending so much time laboring over a single structure is almost a moral blight upon those of us who have worked so hard only to produce so little because reality is so time consuming to replicate in this game manually with the only assistance being world edit. 100xing a builder's power in speed is something I see as an ethical necessity. If we can build it, finishing becomes possible. It's as simple as that. So how do we build this? Here's a moment of transparency. Money. After running a peer volunteer organization for multiple years, you learn that. On our Patreon, we provide a number of awards, the higher tiers, including all of the maps we've ever built over the years. And the next milestone of support we reach, I will start allocating a significant amount of the Patreon's profit to a part-time developer's salary. If you're interested in the rewards, consider the higher tiers. But if you're not, but you want to see the development of a program that's going to be the milestone that turns the tide on the fate of the project's ultimate goal, Tier 1 is only 2 bucks a month, a way to show your long-term support in a low-cost tier that is the least cumbersome to maintain long-term. I've got new ideas for new Patreon tier and new rewards for current tiers that aren't ready to be announced yet, but they're gonna be awesome, so stay tuned for that. If you're a casual Pippin FTS viewer or just a Build the Earth watcher, please consider low-cost patronage. If half of my subscribers joined Tier 1 for two bucks a month, we'd have this thing produced before the end of the year. Also, that would change my life. Like, holy shit. Most builders seem thrilled about the idea of having something like this that I've managed to talk to so far. There's been no pushback, but I can think of a few concerns. Inevitably, with a program like this that would automate so much of the process, the community of builders will be tempted to say that everyone who builds with this makes maps, houses, etc. that all end up looking the same. There's ways to circumvent this. You could input custom windows, doors, and roof features that are your own preference, even multiple to choose from in order to serve the building's accuracy. These presets could be established and selected easily. And another interesting idea that we have yet to talk about is using AI to learn your building style. But that opens Pandora's box, which of course we will in another video. A huge thanks to Anna Pointer, Cristiano Frazanetti, Jonathan Finelli, and Thibault Tollet. If life were a butcher shop, I'd grind your meat any day.